Want help to grow your business? Download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today. Hello and welcome to How I Double, the show where we take a look at businesses that have doubled their turnover in the last two years. And we've got a very special guest today, someone who's not only doubled their turnover in the last two years, but has done it twice, with a projection to double the turnover again in the coming year. We're joined from Amazonia by Dwayne Martens. Dwayne, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Pete. Pleasure to be here. Great to have you. Now, you're quite young, first of all. How old are you? I'm 30 years old. 30 years old with that little glimmer of a South African accent. What's the, uh, what's the background? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, so originally from South Africa, between Durban and Peter Maritzburg, and um, moved over here when I was 12, 13. It's a little bit vague now. But yeah, to the land of opportunity, Australia. So <laughs> tell me, why did, you make why did your family make the move when you were that young? Um, yeah, South Africa is a pretty tough place. We were on a farm. Um, we had a lot of our livestock stolen and stuff like that. And it was just got quite hairy, let's just say. So I loved my upbringing. I was like the only white kid in an African school. It was, it was a bit of a culture shock coming from a very um, Africa, which is raw and real, to Australia, which is raw and real as well. But it was just a completely different culture. So, yeah, it was... It was a beautiful transition, that's for sure. Okay, so let's talk about Amazonia. This is your pride and joy these days. How did that come about? So um, when I went actually traveling around uh, Europe, so for a good year I went traveling, and I kind of said no to uni for a year and I'm going to go traveling. It was a very pinnacle point of my um, life in a sense that I went traveling and I put myself out there. I put myself out there in every aspect I could do. I experienced things. I wasn't afraid. I w went out there. I was young. I was kind of semi-wild. Um, <laughs> semi-wild. <laughs> Wild, okay. Um, but the big thing is I had a lot of mindset books as well. And I was reading up a lot about mindset and everything like that. And through the travels, I gained a lot of self-belief. Self-belief in the space that I put myself out there and I got myself out of situations. I g gained a lot of confidence in myself. And... You know, I came back to Australia and I, my granddaddy um, got, gave me an inheritance of $3,000 and I went, yep, I've got $3,000. Um, my friend's brother-in-law was selling some stock of his business of exotic fruits and I went, boom, I'm going to put it down on this fruit. So heaven behold, a few months later, I lost my $3,000. <laughs> I, I can't imagine how exotic fruit would seem like they'd sell like hotcakes, Like you've never right? heard of them, like cashew fruit. Kaju fruit. It didn't even have English writing on the, the packaging. But I guess the big thing for me is that I'd actually got myself in the game. And that's actually one of the biggest uh, obstacles that people face in business. They just don't put themselves in the game at all. <laughs> and for me, it was I was in the game. I was playing around. I had to run around to these um, cafes, find out that they didn't sell. But, you know, what actually happened, I started to op I opened up a little Fremantle Market store little market store and I brought my little frozen fruits and I actually um, blended up the frozen fruits for people and um, gave it out to them. And one of these fruits was acai berry, which is very, very popular now in Australia. Uh, and around the world, we actually export quite a few containers. Uh, but acai was uh, one of these exotic fruits. And heaven behold, everyone's buying acai and all this other fruit kind of fall by the wayside. So I guess... The big thing then was like, acai is doing well. I'm going to go and invest my time, invest my time to actually go and do that acai, go and push it. Started to make a few more bowls and smoothies at the markets. Um, did my first little business trip. Went and got a little business partner, Chris, who came on very early. And, you know, acai started to really build up. So when, so acai started to sell at the market store. I saw an opportunity in that, hey, if it's selling here, it's going to be selling everywhere else. So instead of dealing with the frozen fruit, I started to deal with the dried fruit. Discovered how nourishing it was, 42 times the antioxidants of fresh blueberries, all the fair trade aspect. And there was a big demand for it in the market already. So there's a lot of online spamming and this and that. So uh, while other companies were putting their advertising out and saying, hey, look, we do acai. I didn't even bother with that. 
all I focused was is getting distribution and into as many outlets as possible. And that's what we focused on first and foremost. We, we got the best distributors in the marketplace and we knew the demand was there and we focused on in-store promotions and what at the sale point. And that really suddenly we went from hero, I mean from zero, <laughs> I was always a hero, eh? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I went from hero to what? Hero. <laughs> An even bigger hero, of course. <laughs> so it's it's interesting because even though you, you got that $3,000 from your grandfather, that was, and you know, you did your dough initially, that was the start of what's now a business that turns over in excess of a million dollars a month. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's an incredible journey to get from point A to point B. We yeah. might as well just wrap up the show and say, thanks for joining us. No, we, <laughs> like there's a big gap in the middle there. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what I want to focus on. So to, today, tell me a little bit about the business today. What, uh, what does Amazonia do today? So Amazonia is a health food company, um, but we are a health food company that focuses on we're game changers in the supplement industry. So there's a big, uh, big uh, process around synthetic supplementation, which synthetic supplementation, you don't need synthetic food, so why are you supplementing synthetically? So we are big about creating functional nutrients and um, providing a supplement ranges. We've got a number of brands in that space that kind of um, provide good, proper nutrition. <laughs> and so could say it that who, way. who are your customers? Who, who buys your products? Well, depending on which brand we talk about, um, so for our whole live brand, which is actually a pharmacy base, it's a much more educated woman, a woman that um, is, it does have the, a baby here and there. That's kind of our target market and our thing, whereas our raw is our more trend-based customer. So we're talking more of your crossfitters that are moving into more um, better sources of protein, more of your um, you know, young yoga woman, a bit more young demographic, cooler, vibier. Whereas authentic, real, cool vibe. And then also acai is a very strong part of our business still. Again, that actually fits in with the raw and under the Amazonia brand. So it's, it's a multi-branded thing. But uh, the big one with marketing is to actually know who you are. It's one of the biggest aspects. If you know who you are, you can market to who you are. And you can actually really build a proper brand clear and you send a clear message to all the staff as well exactly what's going on there yeah. and i'd love to get into some of those details as we go through the specific five points that we'll get on to but just before we do that also um there's some amazing awards that you guys have also achieved and yeah. it fairly recently tell us a little bit about yeah those. so we um won telstra new south wales business of the year it's the most um credible and acclaimed business award in australia uh and that was a very, very big achievement, over 3,000 applicants. So I guess they come in, they do, do strong due diligence on the business from systems to um, vibe and feel of the business to company culture as well. So very, very proud and very thankful for Telstra for those awards as well. And, um, you know, being nominated Entrepreneur of the Year, um, a, a finalist there, which is very exciting. So we had a, a few things going on of late. And a lot going on before you've turned 30, that's for sure. Oh, yeah, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've gone from hero to extra big hero, right? <laughs> you've got to have dibs on yourself in this game. Well, <laughs> exactly right, exactly right. Why do you think I'm hosting this show? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so let's talk about our five specific things. That's what we focus on on this show. What are the five specific things that have led to doubling your turnover? And number one, I've got understanding customers' future needs. Now, instantly, people are going to be watching this thinking, Okay, what, do you guys have a crystal ball? What on earth does understanding customers' future needs mean? Um, a good entrepreneur can tell the future. <laughs> <laughs> now, in a, in a, not to be so corny with that, but it is. It's a very, very important thing. And a, a very strong entrepreneur can see where the market's going and position themselves in, a, in the space that the market moves into their product and service. So how we do it, um, we understand people, there's going to be a huge issue, and it is a currently a huge issue, with health. The food that we consume is killing us at the moment, and the stats all point towards it. Lifestyle disease is the biggest killer, and it's on the rise. Lifestyle disease is caused by lifestyle issues. Stress, big aspect of that is the consumption of what we take into our bodies. So lifestyle disease is going to be one of the... Is the biggest killer already in society and it's only getting worse and worse and lifestyle disease isn't one that you can just take a quick fix drug or anything like that it's caused by lifestyle 
and the way that we probably need to really look at how to treat it is through lifestyle. So what we do as a brand is we provide good, authentic, more natural based products, which the body is always eaten and consumed. <laughs> Um, but we also provide solution-based business in that we put a whole program together like that. So it, It's one thing, though, to understand that you need something. I mean, mm -hmm. everyone watching this would probably understand that they're supposed to eat well and exercise regularly. Mm -hmm. But there's a huge difference between knowing that and actually doing it. So a part of what you do is actually going out and educating people that this is indeed what they need. And for the most part in business, they'll talk you out of doing things like that. You know, they'll say, take something that people already need in the marketplace. But you're saying, we're developing something that people may not necessarily know that exists, and you're educating them first. Yeah, so uh, the way I look at it, I'm not the only educator. So when you're on trend and when you're, you're stepping into market space, um, the market steps into your space, that is when you've got a good business. Uh, and that is when every single person around you is educating. So I'll give you an example for my business. Instagram's a big thing suddenly popped up. You, it, there's a huge trend from people getting advice from doctors and that to more health bloggers and fitness ones. It's not so much for the, the disease orientation, it's more so for the lifestyle orientation. So there's a huge amount of people educating on what's what. And we just need to provide those authentic products that sit in that space that people are proud to uh, ic talk about and proud to recommend. So, yeah. Now, did you sit down, look at the research, look at the studies and go, this is a space we need to move into? Or did it come across as uh, feedback on the products that you had? Which way did it come about? Did you go searching for it or did it <coughs> find you? So it came about because we're a bunch of health nuts <laughs> and we go, okay, we, we live and breathe health in the business and that's just everyone around, the, around that. And I'll be totally honest with you, you're not going to get a good health food company that's not run by health nuts. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you might, maybe not, but if they're a strong, authentic one. And we're a bunch of health nuts and we went, what do we see as the issue? The people in the company, what do we see as the issue? We're, what would we want as people? Because we're coming from a bit of an extreme. And here's the marketplace. This is your average Joe Blow, where they're eating. This is where we're eating. But the average Joe Blow is slowly moving into this direction here. So as time goes on, I believe five, 10 years, so be it. We're not in this for a short term gain. This is gonna be continually to shift into this direction because people are getting more and more issues with their health as time goes on. And also another big, big one is people are starting to understand and self-educate themselves. And there is no bigger investment than in your life. There's one body you get, one life, there's no bigger investment than your health. And we understand that. And that's going to be more and more people are going to start to understand that. <laughs> I, I know there's going to be people watching this, though, with their own businesses at home. And they're going to be thinking, OK, that's great. Like, you know, health, wellness. Yeah, of course, it's a shining light saying this is something that we're moving towards. Mm -hmm. But for an average business that isn't necessarily in moving towards health, it might be a mechanic or a dry cleaner mm -hmm. or something, they might be saying, if I'm trying to predict the future, I'm on a hiding to nothing. It, like I'm almost guaranteed throwing my money away. What would you say to someone that's, that is in that position going, how do I look forward to the future in my business? Yeah, well, you've got to just look at the market. You've got to feel, you've got to understand your market, which is the first one. You've got to understand where you're positioned in your market and where you want to be positioned in your market. That is the first and utter step to doing it. To continue enjoying this presentation, download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today.